Well, good morning. I'm Tim Sheehy, president of the Metropolitan Milwaukee Association of Commerce, and welcome to the Business of Metro Milwaukee. This webinar has two goals, to provide you with information that helps you make better business decisions and to share insights on the region's challenges and opportunities. First, a note from our sponsor, United Healthcare. MMAC has partnered with United Healthcare to make it easier to find a health plan that works for your employees and your bottom line. United Healthcare's plan offers coverage for companies with two to 130 employees, allowing smaller, mid sized companies to take advantage of coverage typically reserved for larger companies, like underwriting for more competitive pricing, better data so you know where your premium dollars are going, and a potential surplus if claims are lower than expected, and access to critical illness, accident protection, and hospital, and hospital indemnity plans to provide further financial security for your employees. In short, it's a great benefit plan to help you recruit and retain the talent in this challenging environment. And I think the best plug I can give the program comes from the 633 employers enrolled in the program and the 21,000 employees and their dependents that are utilizing the program. So reach out to an MMAC affiliated broker to help you receive discounted rates or contact your MMAC broker or visit mmac.org to learn more. So today we have two topics, uh, one on public safety and one on health. And we're gonna be joined first by Milwaukee Police Chief Jeffrey Norman to discuss public safety and its impact on the community and our economy. The second half of the program will bring on Dr. John Raymond, President and CEO of the Medical College to give us a regional update on health. But let's start with you, Chief Norman. First of all, welcome, and thank you for taking the time to join us today. Um, and as they say, we certainly live in interesting and, and challenging times. Um, and I'd, I'd like to start out by just having you give us a sense uh, uh, or a perspective as you see the state of public safety in the city. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for inviting me to be on this program. Appreciate being able to present to the MMAC community and also the greater Milwaukee, Wisconsin community. I always like to remind, I know that we talked in the past, Tim, I am a MMAC scholar. Many, many moons ago, this organization has provided me an opportunity to uh, gain a higher education, first generation college student. So thank you all who are part of this. You have made some really great uh, investments in regards to what is our uh, Milwaukee community looks like. Well, and so, thank, thank you, you've been a great, you've been a heck of a return on investment. <laughs> <laughs> the ROI is high. <laughs> is. So as you just mentioned earlier, we are in some challenging times. Uh, when we talk about public safety, it is a, uh, a frequent topic in regards to not only for the business community, but for residents, uh, for other stakeholders, uh, especially when we talk about specifically the Milwaukee community. But we all know that there's a perception of where we believe we are at and where we really at. I know that we've seen some horrific uh, examples of violence in our city, uh, some unfortunate notorieties in regards to, you know, posters of YouTube documentaries in regards to some of our challenges. But I can say from a statistical numbers perspective, we are doing a lot better than 2021. In fact, when we had did a mid-year report out uh, with the mayor, Mayor uh, Cavalier Johnson, uh, we were at 8% under prior to uh, comparable numbers of last year. Now we're currently at 14% under in regards to overall what we call part one crimes. So those are your major crimes that reflect, you know, robbery, aggravated assault, rape, uh, homicide. So those are those uh, numbers that includes in that. But I always like to put in the right perspective that because of the statistical numbers say that we're doing better, I understand the concerns, I understand the you know, perceptions of us who see things going on, especially some, again, horrific examples of, you know, whether it is a stolen vehicle, you know, we were unfortunately uh, earlier this year challenged with a couple of instances that happened downtown, one was a shake shack involved one of our detectives involving the auto theft issue, firearms. And so we are consistently making sure that we are interacting with our greater Milwaukee community, understanding that the dialogue needs to be consistent and uh, robust because we're only as good as what we know. 
And so we are still dealing with a number of different challenges uh, within our respective Milwaukee community, especially when we talk about reckless driving and violence. Uh, firearms being in the middle of uh, most of our violence going on within the city. Now the question comes up, how do we compare to other cities? How do we compare overall? I know that uh, we are part of what's called the Major City Chiefs Association, MCCA. They came out with a recent report on how we compare with 70 other major cities. And we're pretty much in the middle in regards to our particular situation. Uh, there are a lot of other cities doing a lot worse than us, and there are other cities doing better than us. I know that we have uh, overall numbers of what aggravated assaults look like nationwide. For us, we're down 6%. But for the Mayor City Chiefs, we're, they're up, I believe, around like 9 or 10% nationwide. So we do have some really great things going on within our city because of our partnerships, working with not only our business community, working with the community stakeholders, the Safe and Sounds, the you know, other you know, uh, ingrained uh, uh, organizations, Office of Violence Prevention, working with elected officials, understanding that, again, public safety is a team activity. Uh, nationwide, uh, for robberies, we're up. I believe like 11 or, or, or 12%, but for the city of Milwaukee, we are down 11%. So we do have some really great things going on with the resources that we're utilizing within our city. Uh, we are all challenged nationwide because even those who are doing better, it's only slightly better. Uh, there are, you know, again, um, um, some unfortunate uh, respective issues within our cities, especially when you start talking about young adults, you talk about firearms, we talk about mental health issues, the anxiety. Um, we don't have to, you know, take up this program time to see the other examples, whether it's Uvalde or Buffalo, or incidents of misuse of firearms and those who are dealing with the anxiety and mental health issues. And so the question is the why, I think is so multifaceted in regards to that. We have so many different issues, you know, why Highland Park incident took place? where someone you know, opened up fire on a you know, parade. Why did we see what happened you know, within you know, Buffalo? You know? And I say uh, a lot of it has to do with some mental health. Uh, you know, I say that there is unfortunate uh, platforms inside social media that uh, takes advantage of those who are having uh, socialization skills issues. I know that we see a lot of hate and a lot of unfortunate uh, divisiveness going on within those platforms and there are people who are um, really uh, moved or you know influenced by that uh, but we also have again availability I, I say this in regards to some of our motor vehicle thefts and firearms go hand in hand with the expansion of you know rights to carry your firearms and again this is not a platform to talk about whether I'm for it or against it this is not a situation to talk about in regards to my feelings about what you have as a constitutional right but I'm talking about responsibility I'm talking about those who are taking on that huge responsibility of, you know, dealing with a firearm, the responsibility of being able to have uh, uh, responsible gun ownership, you know, not leave that uh, unsecure within your vehicles. Because unfortunately, our statistics are showing that those irresponsible acts are contributing to our firearm violence within the city. So working on those angles of doing more public uh, uh, um, uh, messaging, um, reassuring that we are, you know, being a part of the uh, movement of working with a number of different uh, organizations, whether, you know, talking about gun locks, gun safety, but also ensuring that we're focusing on those individuals who are um, participating in these particular type of violent behaviors of, uh, you know, the uh, accessibility of firearms. Can, um, let me ask you, um, can, can I ask you the a question absolutely. around around this? Um, and if others have questions, you know, we've got the Q&A in the chat, so please lob your questions in. Um, and appreciate uh, very much the work that you and your uh, officers do. And while crime's coming down, it's certainly coming down from what is at or near an all-time high. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about, you did a little bit about what's driving it. I mean, if I remember my previous discussion with police chiefs, a lot of the, um, the, the the murders, the homicides, are between individuals that know each other or there's yes. some relationship. Yes. And, so, I'm, and, and you are on the, the police department's on the kind of the tail end of this, right? So yes. what, what is it that we can do to kind of address the, the homicides across the city? So, and, and thank you for that question. Uh, you know, one of the things that we are challenged with in the city, I forgot to mention that our homicide numbers are still, uh, unacceptably high, even though I will say this, one homicide is more than 
you know, um, too many. Uh, I will put in a proper context, starting off 2022, we were about 118% over compared to last year. Now we hover around 14%. So while we are not where we need to be, the trend is right in regards to the work that we're doing. And some of the drivers that we're seeing, especially in regards to our firearm violence or homicides or non-fatal shootings, is the firearm violence connected with those who know each other. Uh, there is very little randomness in regards to the activities going on within our community. Uh, I see that uh, the two number one drivers is poor conflict resolution or domestic violence, which is again, poor conflict resolution if you think about it. So having accessibility of firearms when you're having these particular type of issues just really up the ante in regards to the damaging uh, aspect that comes out of it. Uh, from a community, uh, helping in regards to what we can do more for the conflict resolution type of programming, mediations. Um, and again, I talked about earlier about the Office of Violence Prevention. They use mediators within their particular organization to be able to have that real time on the front end rather than a reactive, which we, we do as officers responding to a, a shooting, responding to a homicide, of intervening for those who are having those challenges of resolving a conflict using other resources out there to help. Again, you know, there's a lot of different great uh, community organizations. I know that the Children and Family Peace Center uh, works with their DV high risk team. Uh, again, another great investment to be able to be proactive, working with victims, seeing what other resources we can do to uh, address the, the, the uh, suspect uh, proactively before it becomes, you know, again, a homicide or a serious great bodily harm type of situation. So there's a lot of different platforms and we're always willing to be part of those conversations with our community partners of what those particular type of um, uh, possibilities are. Um, Walker Police Department is always looking for partnerships with uh, all parts of our community. And we are, again, very uh, proactive and transparent in the uh, challenges, also the data we report out public face on our website. Uh, you can come to Crime and Safety Meetings and get those updates because uh, the unfortunate thing is we're still in some challenging times. Our numbers keep going back and forth, up and down in regards to homicides and non-fatals. And uh, that really surrounds because of the prevalence of firearms in the, in the wrong hands and those who are utilized. Because conflict has always been there. Is that now we're utilizing firearms as the resolver of these particular conflict, which has deadly results. Do, do you feel, um, and this may be um, a difficult question for you to ask, but do you feel that as you apprehend the people doing things wrong, that they're getting um, prosecuted and adjudicated in the right way? Or is that a challenge in terms of having them back on, uh, back on the street, so to speak? So that is a challenge. Um, there's no secret in regards to the challenge of not only the custodial aspect of it, whether you want to talk about temporary or the actual end result being in prison, and also the level of uh, cases being brought before the um, district attorney's office. I will say that Mark Police Department share a robust relationship with both of those partners in regards to having, you know, regular communications with the uh, DA's office and the, and, the, and the courts. But, you know, 2020 has done such a job on so many facets of our community. Whether we talk about from a business standpoint, chain supply. We talk about in regards to availability of all those things is affecting the criminal justice system. In regards to you know the back backup of uh, you know, the courts, you know the backup of you know cases being prosecuted, and so we're dealing with some challenging times of trying to work through it. I know that we are you know working pretty you know, um, robustly in regards to being able to deal with like when we had that serious situation in uh, on Water Street where we had you know the multiple you know shootings. The DA's office was very responsive in regards to securing you know uh, uh, real time prosecution I and mean, charging. And that these cases are being, you know, uh, being reviewed at the, uh, in the, in the court process. So it, when, it, when the need is really there to really step it up, I can say that the partnerships have stepped up. But we're not uh, at a place where we need to, uh, where we should be at. I know that we're backed up in court uh, uh, cases. I know that we're, you know, close to over, you know, to almost 200 homicide trials that are being uh, still being waited to be uh, dealt with. We do see some, you know, unfortunate individuals who are out on bail recommitting crimes, which is definitely a challenge for us because, you know, that is emboldening those individuals 
who are, you know, again, um, going through a process. But the unfortunate thing is there's a hierarchy. You know, we have so many violent crimes that are being addressed that there is, you know, a challenge of dealing with what we consider lower level crimes, not less important, but just from the standpoint of homicide to, you know, being involved in a non-fatal where you get shot, but you don't die. We are pretty, you know, I don't want to say flush is the right word, but, uh, you know, uh, have a, a huge caseload of those circumstances where the real eye opener about this, is that we're dealing with individuals who are involved in firing violence who have no record. That's a game changer. You know, don't get me wrong, it's not good for anyone, record or not, to be involved, but that really is challenging for us because we're getting individuals involved in our system who are committing homicides or down fatal shootings who have no record, yeah. but have the unfortunate, you know, um, uh, you know, using of a firearm to resolve their differences. So those are the challenges that we're working with, and, and, and we have a lot of different robust teams to you know, put our heads together because Milwaukee Police Department cannot do it alone. I'm very thankful to the business community. I think for individuals such as yourself, Mr. Sheedy, that have been part of these conversations and really have the, you know, input of, you know, what the problems are, what can we do together, and, uh, you know, have that, uh, you know, evidence-based look at, okay, was this activity really working and how we can do more. So, so let me ask you another question here, uh, and it goes to resources, and not that more police are the answer to every crime, but if you were the chief of police, I think go back to 2000, you would have another 300 police officers than you do today. So can you talk a little bit about the challenge of uh, your, your staffing levels? And then I want to kind of follow up and see if you've been communicating this to the leadership in Madison. As you know, we've been working to try to get more resources to the city. And I know that's yes. a, a, a key concern of yours. Yes. So as a uh, chief executive, I will never say no to more officers. I think that is the, uh, you know, important aspect of knowing that there's a lot of work to do. A few hands are, you know, uh, doing it. Uh, we are dealing with some challenging attrition times. Uh, this year, we have three large uh, police academy classes, retirement eligible, who are, you know, again, there is nothing against them taking uh, um, advantage of their God earned retirement. I believe that, you know, with all the chances that we have, you cannot blame someone who says, you know what, it's time for me to see what else is out there. And so we are going through another challenging time over a big class retiring this, this particular month. And uh, from where we were to where we're at now, you're right, we do have a, a significant difference in regards to the membership. But I will say that the elected officials, especially when we talk about our mayor, has been very supportive. Uh, we've had uh, a number of classes that were uh, um, attributed to the work of the mayor and also the common council that we have, you know, um, you know, academy classes coming through. We just graduated 55 uh, last week. We have another 60, a little bit over 60 in class house right now. So there, there is help. It's just unfortunately, you know, just like anything, you know, you have to kind of get your steps in the book to really be up to a level of competency coming out of the academy class. I know that we've been uh, blessed with the uh, COPS grant from, uh, uh, the, uh, from DC. Uh, that will give us an opportunity to have another 50 officers. It sounds like we should be able to have that support to have that particular COPS grant for uh, an upcoming class for next year. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. It's just that unfortunately, there's more going out the door than coming in where that is that transitional challenges that we have to work through. Uh, the men and women of the Market Police Department is working diligent, working extremely hard for you all. And I see it every day. And there is uh, nothing but um, uh, thankfulness and appreciation for the work that they do on behalf of the safety of our community. Uh, we are asking a lot from them right now because of our transition. But uh, we're not going to drop the ball or stop the work that needs to be done because we're committed, we're sworn, and that uh, they see their leader out there with them in regards to encouragement and support. And uh, really thankful for the community, business community, the residents community, the community stakeholder community for your support in regards to work that's being done. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's a, obviously a challenge bigger than just, you know, the police department here. But just to put this yeah. in perspective so everybody in the audience understands, I, I think the police department now exceeds the entire property tax collection for the city of Milwaukee. And so with shared revenue being flat and the lack of access to any other resources, it's really required 
uh, you to operate a much smaller police department than your yes. predecessors do. Yes. Um, and, and that goes to, I think, some of the challenges that you have in, um, you know, for example, when the Bucks were playing, just the, the surge of being able to surge officers in a certain area. Yes. So I think clearly part of the answer for the department, I'm assuming, and the city is to be able to get additional resources to get our Absolutely. police force back to where it was. Absolutely. And, and that's where and the great, you know, lead into that conversation, Tim, everyone has a lever, meaning that you have respective communications with your representatives. There is a unit, a uniform uh, messaging needs to come from the business community, whether or not you live within the community of Milwaukee, you do have respective voices in your own community to pull that lever and have the communication about how important it is to have the support for the resources because Milwaukee does affect our entire state. You know, the challenge that comes out of our city is mobile. It goes to all parts of our community in regards to the state, but also across the country in regards to if we don't get a handle on some of our challenges. Believe me, you know, we're working so many different angles of, you know, from community groups to our government, you know, uh, entities, like I said, Office of Violence Prevention or the Department of Neighborhood Services, Department of Public Works. So there is a lot of uniformity but there's only so much with the resources that we do have. So I know that there was a follow up question that you had there, Tim, regards to how am I assisting in regards to the conversation with Madison, assisting the mayor's office, you know, ensuring that there is robust conversation between him and I for the challenges that we're dealing with resources, um, being able to have these conversations on all these different kinds of platforms, whether it's MMAC or other communities in regards to being that voice of saying, pull your lever in your respective community, Talk, we all know someone, we all have a voice. There needs to have that collective voice and letting those who have the decision-making authority understand our challenges here and how this is all connected in regards to the health of this city is connected to the health of this state. You know, and, and I hate to keep bringing up these challenging topics, but uh, that's what you're here for. Yes, so, sir. So, you heard me talking to Dr. Real... Raymond, so. Yeah. <laughs> So, so one of the real challenges that the city's had, and, and it's one you know that I've observed personally, is the increase in car theft and carjackings and the related part of that, the reckless driving. But I think at one point, if I had the statistic right, we were, you know, it was like 24, 25 cars a day. Um, and so can you talk a little bit about uh, what's driving that? Um, and then how, how are you responding to that? Because I, I think that's a part of the crime scene that, that has really become citywide. Yes, it is. So uh, within the context, we started to see a real serious uptick back in uh, November of uh, 2020, uh, 2020 uh, where we started seeing the um, particular vehicle within the Kia Hyundai really contributing to an overall uh, crisis of auto thefts. And as we are um, really putting a handle on that particular vehicle model. Um, we're seeing it trend down. We have put together a motor vehicle task force earlier this year. We've worked with, again, our partners, our elected officials, you know, Department of Public Works, where they're, you know, having, you know, re re redesigning streets and whatnot, work with the community stakeholders about Vision Zero. So there is a lot of effort collectively in regards to work against, you know, auto thefts and also reckless driving. Uh, we're training in the right direction. We have double digits. I think we're like over 20% for this year reduction in motor vehicle thefts. But the challenge is still real. Uh, we have, again, challenges that these vehicles are easily stolen. Having some of these documentaries, I know that there was a documentary that went viral with the Kia, you know, boys, uh, really shows you the depth and breadth of our challenges, especially when we talk about young ones, because it's not more than just teenagers. It's young adults also engage in this behavior and the social media viralness of this game being spread around. I was just reading right now, you can kind of look this up, Google it. The challenge is nationwide, you know, uh, right now Columbus, Ohio is, uh, you know, again, dealing with this Kia uh, Hyundai situation where they're seeing their motor vehicle thefts increase 400%. We're already kind of uh, been past that, you know, uh, um, uh, huge spike. We're seeing the downward trend right now, I think, uh, when the last time uh, we were looking last year, we were like 3% under. Now we're at 6% under. So we are really putting some great efforts into this. But how the business community can help out is, again, messaging, you know, signage. You know, we need to ensure that we're locking our cards. We're telling individuals, you know, uh, to be aware about having valuables 
uh, uh, out and, and, and um, being uh, visible because that's enticement because most motor vehicle thefts is a crime of impulse. It's a crime of availability. And so when you recall target hardening, meaning that you're not making it easy, it's great to be able to say, you know, this is not gonna be an easy particular uh, situation to uh, take the vehicle. You know, expand your camera systems. You know, being a part of the communication with your district commander where they have, you know, community liaison officers working with you to target hardening, meaning what can you do to show up your business where there's a parking lot, is it fencing, is it lighting, that can make it, again, more difficult to have those type of activities. You know, we have a really robust community team, particular one, which deals with the downtown. You know, have representatives come to crime and safety meetings so they can have communications about what are the trends, but also what's going in your particular area so that we have feedback to be able to address it. We work, you know, uh, robustly with the uh, bucks and, you know, because we see an uptick when we have the influx of out-of-towners because unfortunately out-of-towners come with you know, their own challenges of, you know, hey, you know, you got to be a little bit more aware of your surroundings. And that's where the communication comes in working together that we can help out each other. So um, looking forward a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about the, the challenges and maybe some of the opportunities um, as you gear up for the 2024 RNC, uh, which will not be a light lift in terms of security for the city. So the big thing is uh, understanding what is your role respectively in the planning. Uh, we are already in the planning phase. Uh, the biggest uh, challenge would be the influx of officers. You're talking about thousands and thousands of officers being brought into the community. So whether or not you are operating within the you know footprint of wherever the RSC will be, that would be a challenge of you know what type of officers you will have um, uh, surrounding you know the accessibility for your business uh, will uh, might be you know asked whether you're part of the you know um, housing community where. There may be some housing aspects that can be asked of the business community for, you know, the influx of security personnel coming in. Being communicative with the MMAC, communi communicative with Visit Milwaukee, making sure what is it going to be the challenges for your respective uh, business, but also what can you add to help us out? We're going to have food issues, you know, we're going to have, you know, again, a lot of, uh, you know, housing issues. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity to have a lot more conversation with the business community because that lift is going to be challenging for that week. But it's going to be a good week because I think that we're going to have such a, you know, really robust uh, uh, working together as a community to understand what that unfortunate sacrifice for us all is going to look like for that week. But uh, also the economic opportunity for you all to, you know, again, to, you know, be, uh, you know, recipients of yeah. this particular type of uh, showcase. And uh, so it's, it's going to be a, a, a good challenge. But, uh, you know, this is not our first rodeo. I was part of the crisis management team last time for the DNC knowing all the partnerships and what my role is, working on relationships, working on making sure that we have some great conversations with those who will be able to help us with this lift, being communicated what that lift looks like, whether it's going to be helping us out with equipment, resources, officers, and uh, also making sure that we communicate to the business community how you can be assistive in regards to being able to be supportive, especially for the security nature of what's going to be called for for that particular week. Yeah, Chief, I, I don't know if you have this uh, information at your fingertips, but obviously crime anywhere in the city uh, is impactful on the neighborhood in which it's happening. Yes, sir. Um, as, as we try to get uh, workers to return downtown uh, post-COVID uh, and get back in the office, do you have a sense of the statistics? Is it um, less safe in the downtown district? If you look back a couple of years, how, how does that stacking up? Because I hear a lot of people concerned about crime. And again, I'm not saying that because crime is happening in other parts of the city, it's not impactful, but what does it look like from the downtown perspective? So the downtown perspective is very good. First of all, you have a great team that is uh, involved in the overall safety of downtown, uh, whether it's Captain Campbell or his second Lieutenant Teal. Please let your people know, there have been a number of large organizations activities that took in place downtown without a hitch. Whether you talk about Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance, where they had an influx of 15,000 people from out of town in our city, or you talk about, you know, we have a number of different conventions. You know, we had the International Association of Chiefs of Police. But what was really impactful is we had robust communications with the downtown business community, you know, with the hotels. What does it look like in regards to your security footprint? Who are the points of contact? 
Only together are we able to ensure that we're able to do our best in regards to security. Do we have our challenges? Absolutely. You know, we do have some, you know, again, the, the auto theft issue where, you know, we had, you know, unfortunate influx early this summer. But working with our community, we really made a dent in that. You know, we really make sure that we are being as responsive and targeting the right individuals in the right areas to have that impact. And so we're a, a, a robust partner with you all. If you need us to come in and speak to your people, it's important for us to have that communication of what is the reality. Because unfortunately, there's been many times where there wasn't an incident that took place in the city. And the media doesn't report that out. You know, no homicides, no shooting took place today, you know, but whenever there is one, it re gets reported. So there's this misperception that, you know, because it's been reported, it's going on every day. No, it's not. But it's important for us to continue to have robust conversations. You have to be part of our conversations with the Karma Safety or looking onto our websites in regards to a lot of our platform that we present out with our statistics and help us be that communication to your people so that they understand, you know, what the perception is, but how to compare to really what the reality is. Yeah. Downtown is a wonderful place. I eat, play, you know, and work. And uh, I think that it's good for you all to pass it on to your respective, uh, you know, employees. Great. Well, Chief, you've been very generous with the half hour of time uh, that you granted us today and uh, look to have you back on in the future and appreciate your leadership and what you're doing appreciate um, you, in, sir. in really challenging times. So uh, thank you and, and to the entire police force for their service and helping us uh, keep safe. Absolutely. One little plan, plug before we move over to the doctor. Absolutely. We do have a police foundation that is always welcoming more assistance. They help uh, with our, you know, planning and they help with, uh, you know, t trainings. They had a uh, pay for de-escalation training. So, you know, there is a website for the police foundation. There's always a way for the business community to help, whether it's, you know, messaging or, you know, again, support our police foundation. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for having me on today. It was a real pleasure.